Welcome back to the wizard shop. And I know in the thumbnail, this is not the car that's in the thumbnail, but that car will be here in a minute. I got an interesting story on this one right after this. So we're actually gonna talk about the Fleetwood Slowham today and we got some kind of bad news on it. But first, I wanted to share this story with you. This is another one of the cars that'll be in and out of the shop, not be on film. And no, I don't have the same cars in my shop all the time. This is a 2008 Audi A4 with the little two liter turbo in it. This person had it to a dealership to have it diagnosed. It's, it's consuming a lot of oil and it consumes so much oil that it's fouling the spark plugs. I'm not gonna give any names out, but they quoted him a new engine. They told him it's time for a new engine. And I think they really were trying to push him towards that. I think it was gonna be four grand or more or get this one rebuilt or I'm not sure the whole story, but they really wanted to push him into an expensive repair. The wise thing that he did was, let me get a second opinion here. He watches my videos. This is his ne nephew's car, I think. He said, let me get a second opinion. And he took it to here to Omega to have the car wizard check it out. The first thing I did was pull the dipstick and hook a vacuum gauge to it. I got 15 inches of vacuum. That should not be on one of these Audis. It should be one or less. In fact, it should be maybe even pushing a little air out, not sucking air in that hard. When I disconnected the vacuum source to the breather valve, my vacuum gauge went from 15 inches to zero. That told me exactly what's going on here. It's already been replaced, they said. It's brand new. I don't care. I don't care that it's brand new. It's still bad. I got another one ordered and we're gonna get this fixed for him and it's gonna take care of it. That much vacuum in the crankcase is just sucking the oil straight into the turbo. And it's going through oil and it's fouling the plugs all because of this. It doesn't need an engine rebuild. It doesn't need the engine removed at all. You have to be careful, guys. Very, very cautious about what happens at some of these repair shops. So anyways, we're gonna move on to the Cadillac. I just thought I would share this story with you guys. It's, it's just mind boggling, the stuff that I get in here. I'm like, wow, a $60 part, it, it didn't need an engine. It's kind of scary. So anyways, let's move on down the line. Today is kind of a sad day because of the decisions that have been made with my 69 Cadillac. This is the 350 or 5.7 liter diesel that was in it. And there's nothing wrong with this engine. But I have made an executive decision that we're not gonna go with this engine in my Fleetwood Brougham. We're going to take another route, which is actually probably the route that makes the most sense. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with this engine, but Junior Mint's been doing the work and he keeps coming up and said, this is going to have to be changed, this is going to have to be cut, we're going to have to do this, we're going to have to modify this. And I finally said, you know what? No. No. I said, this car is very nice. It's in excellent shape. The interior is immaculate. We're not going to hack this car to pieces. We're not going to tear it up. We're not going to cut it up. I said, we're stopping right now while we're ahead. I said, get that engine out. We'll use it in a different project. We'll do something else. I've had enough, I'm not gonna tear up this car. So here this engine sits, we'll save it for something else. Junior Mint may even have some project he wants to put it in, but it's not going in the 69 Cadillac. Let's move over to the Cadillac. So as you see, the engine bay is empty again. With these motor mounts where this cross member is and the radiator core support and all the different things, we kept having issues. It's too high, it's too low. We're gonna have to cut, we're gonna have to weld, we're gonna have to do this, we're gonna have to do, now we can't close the hood. As far as that diesel engine is concerned, it bolted up, everything bolted up just fine. But we kept having issues with the height of it, or it was too low or too high, the way the intake is so tall. These cars were very low slung is what they call. The intake on the Cadillac engine is actually inverse. It goes downhill to the carburetor and back up just to be able to fit the engine without. That makes for a lower hood height. You don't have a, a tall, this area is not so tall, it's thin. 
That's what they were going for with this car. It's very long, very low slung, very svelte looking. And with the original engine, it fits just fine. But with the diesel engine, that wasn't designed for this car. The intake sits really high. We tried lowering the engine. We ended up on top of the steering linkage. We tried to go a little higher. We ended up with the fans going to run into the core support. And basically, it was this Fleetwood's way of saying, no, wizard, I don't want that engine inside of me. So I finally listened. I said, OK, well, we're going to go back to the original route. I still have the original engine. I have all the original parts. It was just kind of a little worn out. The heads were the problem, really. But let's take a look at that, and let's go over some of the things on that. This is the original engine that came in it. It's a 472 high compression engine. This was 10 and a half to one compression, I believe. There's nothing wrong down here. The, the core of the engine is fine. The block had extremely high nickel content for these years. It's not uncommon to pull the heads off of one of these old engines with high miles on them and you can't even fill a ridge in here. And it's the same story with this one. They're very light. That's how they made them so light, is the extreme high nickel content. I'm going to put new lifters, a new cam. It's already had a new timing gear. It doesn't have the old plastic coated nylon one. It has the metal one in there. But that's all I'm going to do as far as this is concerned. The bottom end is great. It had excellent oil pressure. And it's, it ran good. It just, at idle, it, it was kind of stumbling and rough, kind of a rough idle, I would say. So. We're going to clean this up, put new lifters cam, paint it, make it nice, replace some of the gaskets, and we're going to address this, the real issue of this engine, which is the heads. I'm going to take these heads tomorrow. There's a machine shop in Wichita called Martin Machine. Mike Martin runs and owns it. He's really the only guy in the area that I trust, especially some of the expensive engines I work on to bring him stuff. I've been dealing with him for many years, a long time. He does excellent work. I'm going to have him just basically rebuild these heads. The problem was, and I think we mentioned this in the previous video, I could set these heads upside down and fill these chambers with just, I used antifreeze because it's orange and bright orange. I used orange antifreeze. And it would just leak out of the intake and exhaust ports. It would just drip out. That told me the valves are not sealing at all. I took one of the valves out. It's actually a strong lip there. I may have to get new valves. I don't know yet. I'll let him make that decision, the, mach the machine shop. But it's really, I don't know if you can see it or not. It's very deeply grooved. These also, as far as I can tell, do not have hardened valve seats. It's just the material there is just basically the, what the head's made out of, cast iron right here on this ring. I'm going to have him put hardened valve seats in it. That's very likely the problem here is over the years they went with unleaded fuel, which it, this was designed for leaded fuel. Just slowly ate the seats away. I'm going to have him go through that, hardened valve seats, either do a valve grind or replacement, I'm not sure yet. Resurface the mating surfaces and new valve seals. I'll have him check the guides and see how they are too, see what he thinks. But once we get this issue addressed, I believe this engine's going to run really good. So with freshening up the bottom end, getting these rebuilt, that right there is probably going to be about four or $500. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to go with a carburetor. I just don't like carburetors, especially with today's gas. They boil, they get, the gas boils because it's got ethanol in it. You're sitting at a, on a hot day, July, you're at the red light, your engine starts stumbling and it just dies on you and it won't start. It physically has boiled the gas clear out of the bowl in the carburetor. Or especially if you park it, you go inside and go shopping and you come out and your engine's just crank, 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 crank. I'm not interested in that. What I'm going to do is freshen this engine up, and I'm also going to put a 454 throttle body injection system on it. I get all these parts used, the throttle body itself, the ECM, the harness, and everything used for probably three or four hundred dollars. 
It'll have full-blown fuel injection, no more choke. It'll have high pressure, not really high pressure fuel, it's only 14 PSI, but it's better than carburetor pressure. It'll take care of vapor lock and all those problems. And I can get it out in the morning, start it up, and just go. I don't have to wait for a choke, or I don't have to let it warm up, really. Just, just go for it. So I know that's bad news. A lot of you were excited to hear or see a diesel Cadillac, or an old diesel in one of these old Cadillacs. But the way they designed the, the subframe and the way they designed the hood and, and the whole body, it's just, it just not worth it. Could I cut it and make it work? Yeah, I could. I really don't want to cut that thing up. It's so pretty, it's so nice. The interior is not ripped up. The, the, the leather is in excellent shape. It's not a car that I'm gonna cut and hack it up. It's just not happening, guys. So, sorry for the bad news on that, but that's where we're at with the Fleetwood Brougham. It's no longer a slow ham. It's not gonna be slow, it's gonna be a tire fryer. So, here's the venerable 472 Cadillac engine sitting beside me or in front of me or whatever you wanna say. I'm kind of sad, and I know you guys are kind of sad too about it, but then again, I'm not so sad because this is an awesome engine. 500 plus foot-pounds of torque, almost off idle. It's really, really it's what I should have done in the first place. This, this right here, what I'm going through in this scenario, is what you guys can expect when you try to do engine swaps at home. Except you probably can't just fix your old engine up and do the work yourself as easy as I can or as cheap as I can. This is frequently the outcome of engine swaps. Oh no, car wizard, it ain't that bad. Yes, it is. This is frequently, frequently what happens. I mean, the further proof of that is good friend Freddie Tavarish. He has gone through this a lot. And some of them has been successful, like the Fast and Furious Mercy Lago that he worked on. It actually turned out really good. But for the most part, the, the vehicles end up sitting and sitting, just like this one's been sitting. And finally, you get to it and you find out, wow, there's a lot more modification than I planned on. And you end up either just quitting. The honeymoon period is over and the whole idea of it is just, I don't know, it doesn't ring as strong as it did when I first thought about the idea. Or making, you had a drivable vehicle that's not drivable now. This one will be drivable. I'll just put, fix this and put it back in and be back in business again. It probably will increase its value instead of hurting its value because it'll be the actual original engine that was in it. And what I'll do with it from there, I'll probably enjoy it for a while and just like I always do, sell it or something. But it's beautiful, guys. It's a beautiful car. I can't bring myself to cut it up. I'm just not going to do it. I'm sorry. So anyways, that's enough of the sad news with the Cadillac. And I, I had only planned on filming the Cadillac today, but after I'd been through scenario with this red Audi that you just saw, I knew you guys need to see this. You need to hear this because it is, this is getting bad. It's getting worse and worse in the industry about people being scared into buying things they don't need. So I'm glad I could share that with you guys before the car is in, in, in here and out. If there's any tools or anything that you've seen that I used, or if you're interested in knowing what kind of tools I do use, check my Amazon affiliates below. There's a lot of great gift ideas there. We also have hoodies, shirts, coffee mugs, hats, and things for sale also. If you're interested, also send the Teespring and the Amazon affiliates link to friends and family. If they say, what do you want for Christmas? Send them the link and say, pick something off of that off of one of those lists. I'd be interested in anything off of there. So that's a gift idea as well. And I want to leave you guys with one more statement. This is the final thing before we go. I came to work this morning and there's a man that drove from the state line, from the Missouri state line, all the way here, three hours. He says, I'm here for you to work on my car. I'm not going to mention specifics or the type of car. I don't need to piss nobody off. But I was like, well, you're not scheduled. You don't, he's like, well, I'm here. I took, took him in the window here and I said, look, I have 15 cars in the shop that I'm working on. They're scheduled ahead of you. I have tons of work to get done. This is, this is, I told him to think of it like a doctor's office. You don't just go to your doctor's office on a whim and say, see me now. That's not the way it works. I'm not a, I'm not a Jiffy Lube. The guy was very frustrated and he left. I, I could tell he wasn't happy. But this isn't the first time this has happened. 
I know it's cool to come see the wizard shop and bring your car up, but please call ahead of time. And say, hey, I'd like to let you look at it, and we'll get you scheduled and get you taken care of. I'm happy to look at your car, but you can't just drive up day of at the hour you want it worked on and hand me the keys and say, here you go. Car repairs take a couple of days. I could have found that this and this needs replaced. It might be two or three days before I get the parts. What's he going to do? Sit there in the office for three days? I don't, I don't know. I don't understand that. So, like I said, I enjoy working on you guys' cars, but just please call ahead of time. Let, let my office guy, Crazy D in the office, get you scheduled in and we're happy to, happy to take care of that stuff for you. So, thanks for watching. Many more cool videos to come. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, you won't be disappointed. Mm -hmm.